Hey everyone, uh, welcome to another interview with another very special person, Raghul. Uh, he is currently pursuing his master's in computer science uh, in University of Colorado Boulder. Now I know there are very less number of videos on this particular university, uh, so I am pretty excited about this particular interview. Uh, but before we go into the details with him, uh, would love to hear your introduction, uh, Raghul. Yeah, sure, Nitin. Uh... Hi everyone. I'm Rakul. Currently pursuing my master's in computer science at University of Colorado Boulder. Currently completed my first year of master's here. Uh, prior to that, I worked as a software engineer in a firm called Acolyte Digital in India for three years before coming to my master's. And yeah, uh, that's it for me. Wow, that's that's a quick one. That's good. Uh, so let's let's get started uh, with the first question. And this is one of the uh, major concerns which people have is about the overall experience uh, about the overall expense sorry uh, so how how is the overall fees that you have to pay for two years and what are your overall uh, living expenses that you have to take care of over a period of two years yeah so nitin there are two aspects to it firstly there is a thing called professional masters in computer science and the second track is called the research masters so the fees differs for both of these tracks so i'll share the fees for both of these tracks mm-hmm. so for professional masters the the fees is slightly lesser like it comes around $35000 to complete the whole uh, degree uh, for mm-hmm. two years and for research masters it will come close to $50000 Got um, but the downside is that if you are a professional master's student, you are not eligible for TA and RA jobs. Got so it. in the research master's, you will be eligible for TA and RA, which will get the fees waived off for that particular semester if you get a TA and, or, or an RA. That is great. That is great. So what you're saying is, let's say if I have a TA or RA, and in that semester, I take three or maybe just let's say four or five subjects, all of the fees is taken care of. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Got it. Apart from the TARA, uh, what is the other difference uh, between the professional and the, the research masters? Uh, the other difference is that uh, basically for eight courses, that is for 24 credits, the courses that the students take will be based on their choices. But for the rest of the six credits, the professional master student will be doing some uh, real world uh, projects like software engineering projects with the industry that is startups mm-hmm. in the Boulder area. Whereas the research master students will be doing an independent study or a thesis under a professor, uh, that will be the difference. Basically, that six credits will be the difference between the professional and the research track. Understood, understood. And both of these uh, masters, uh, do they come under the same college or is it like professional comes under business and then uh, the research comes under engineering department? No, both of them comes from the engineering department. Got it, got it, understood. Uh, so uh, what you said is just to summarize about thirty-five to fifty thousand in fees, and then how are your uh, living expenses? Yeah. So currently, I am paying a rent of uh, the housing rent will be around five hundred dollars uh, per month, and then took, uh, the groceries and Wi-Fi and electricity adds up to let's say close to seven hundred to seven fifty dollars per month on an average. And uh, the uh, we can the students here easily get on campus jobs for part time jobs where they can mm-hmm. use that uh, to pay their daily I mean monthly expenses. Got it. And so this... monthly expenses on average would be seven fifty dollars per month. Okay, let's say even if we round it up to eight hundred, yeah. it's it comes around seventeen to eighty thousand eighteen thousand yeah dollars for two years. So yeah, fifty thousand yeah. plus eighteen thousand dollars that is about seventy thousand dollars. Let's say. Yeah, yeah. Sort of round it up seven like fifty to seventy thousand dollars is what your expenses okay. about fifty five to seventy thousand okay. dollars right uh, now uh, following up it with uh, the question and you already touched up to it uh, about the on campus jobs right so how is the situation with on campus jobs uh, you know does everyone get it uh, what is the minimum pay uh, you know mm-hmm. uh, that they get and if there are any tips or tricks to get on campus job what would be those yeah, sure. Uh, so there are three categories of jobs, on-campus jobs, and most of the students typically get the on-campus jobs in our department. So firstly, certain students prefer uh, the jobs in bakeries and dining and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. The pay for that will be $15 per hour. 
mm-hmm. and second category of jobs will be uh, being a grader or a course manager for mm-hmm. a particular course uh, for the undergrads or even graduate courses mm-hmm. and they get paid like 17 dollars to 20 dollars per hour mm-hmm. and the next category of jobs is tnra where uh, they'll get 25 to 30 dollars per hour got it got it so even if you just get like a bare minimum basic job on campus you know maybe in student union cafe somewhere you still will yeah. be able to make about 800 dollars um in easily. a month easily, easily right easily. yeah 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 so a good strategy guys for you would be uh ideally try to get a ta or ra so mm-hmm. that your fees gets gets waived off uh you know uh, I would say TA is better than RA because RA, you never can count how much time you need to put in mm-hmm. uh, to actually get to that 20 hour of work, uh, you know, uh, but TA definitely I feel is still under control. Uh, uh, and uh, okay, so let's, let's move on now, just continuing on the same thread of uh, living, right? Mm-hmm. Where do generally people live uh, in uh, CU Boulder? Uh, is it like close to the university? What are some of the communities where they live? Uh, there is a community called Wimbledon Apartments, which we live currently. <clears throat> and uh, there is a thing called the view, the, the uh, I forgot the name of it. Uh, some people live in on-campus housing as well. And surprisingly, mm-hmm. on-campus housing in our campus is cheaper. It's wow. contradicting to all the universities. <laughs> it's actually... We are currently paying two thousand dollars per month for four people. In on campus, it is usually thousand three hundred or thousand four hundred dollars for two bedroom. So that is pretty good and, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very cheap. On campus housing is very cheap, but the downside of it is that there is a waiting time of one year. So when you apply it before you come to masters, you will get it after the first year of masters. So second year, typically people shift to on campus housing. Mm-hmm. First year they'll try to stay closer to the campus that is easily commutable, like mm-hmm. less than a mile from campus, like mm-hmm. apartments like Wimbledon condominium and the view. And uh, I forgot the name of the third one. Uh, I, no worries. I don't, yeah. Uh, so let's say less than a mile, I think it would be walkable as well. Yeah. But if you at all take uh, a public transport, uh, is that safe in the nights? Just from girls perspective, how, how, uh, uh, how safe it is? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, like it is pretty safe in the night. Uh, taking uh, the, the the buses will be there to campus for every five to ten minutes. Mm-hmm. And even if it's uh, if it's if they don't prefer the bus after seven p.m., the cab facilities are free. They will drop us at the home itself. So it is free for students. So after seven p.m., uh, the the students can use their IDs to book a cab, and that will drop them in their home. It is free of cost. Got it. Got it. Uh, that is good. That is, that is assuring. Now moving on to the next part, uh, which is the curriculum. Mm-hmm. Now I know, um, personally, this is my opinion. Whenever I'm coaching, I'm people, I'm coaching about taking three to four subjects over a period of masters, which will really add some skills and projects to your resume. Right. Mm-hmm. So in your experience so far in putting, pursuing masters, uh, in CS, what are some of those courses which you feel someone should, someone must take mm-hmm. and how, how is your feeling with the overall, uh, you know, curriculum in your course? Yeah. And, uh, the first thing is that again, there are three tracks here. So firstly, certain students will prefer, uh, going into software jobs. Uh, so they will take courses like this object or analysis design algorithms and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And for the systems, uh, distributed systems is a no-brainer. Uh, distributed mm-hmm. systems is a must-take, uh, and the professor is so good here. And the, the CU Boulder is also very famous for the networks. Uh, networks is network courses are very very famous here. Mm-hmm. It has uh, you can there is a separate degree for networking. So wow. networks, yeah, the networks is very very famous here in CU Boulder. And certain students prefer the machine learning track. And with with respect to the machine learning track, I am currently pursuing that. So the courses that you take in masters, you can't convert it directly to the jobs like like applied scientist jobs, like uh, the other jobs like software engineering and the system side. Mm-hmm. So you have to 
put in additional efforts like working under a professor for research to get the job because the machine learning jobs usually prefer the phd candidates right so you should have an additional experience like working under a professor in a lab or taking some phd level courses in addition to the master level courses that you take yeah got it got it uh, but you feel that the overall curriculum is pretty good yeah 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 it is pretty good got it got it uh now uh, moving on to the next part which is more about uh, internships and full time mm-hmm. so how do you feel uh, is the scenario with internships uh, first of all do generally people get internships if so where are they getting internships is it like within colorado uh, uh, boulder or uh, they have to go to seattle washington or bay area or maybe chicago boston how are they what are they doing and then how is the scenario with full time as well like do you see your seniors getting full time uh, uh if you can share about that yeah yeah sure so internships like as you said most of the students are moving to bay area like california and seattle and certain people very few people get in colorado and mm-hmm. very few, and very few people who get in california are doing remote internships and mm-hmm. uh, it is a diverse set of persons so like with full time most of the students most of my alumni got into amazon in mm-hmm. seattle and uh, internships most of my friends uh, got into meta at this time meta had a lot of hiring for interns mm-hmm. and uh, full time also i have seen a uh, few people few of my seniors most of the seniors went into amazon and few seniors went into microsoft and facebook got it got it that is great uh, that is really great um so th- there is this question which came to my mind which i have never asked before uh, mm-hmm. and i haven't shared with you as well before so uh, it's going to be interesting but let's say uh you you had to think about three things you know which you wish you could had in cu boulder you mm-hmm. know uh, what would be those uh the three things you wish you had meaning like before i came to masters here or something like that or no no uh, like three things you miss okay. like you are in c boulder you you talk to your friends in other universities uh who have come to united states maybe some of your seniors um uh, you know uh, okay. from back in india okay. S- some improvements or some you know you wish okay if, the, if we had this like i'll give you an example in sjsu <laughs> i wish we had a bigger campus our campus is very small because we are in a downtown so mm-hmm. i wish we had a bigger campus that would have you know uh, we would have lived a little bit better life uh, campus life to say uh, but what would be those things for you uh to be honest let me be very honest with you it's not because i am being here now uh, i had three wishes before coming to the us mm-hmm. i preferred that the 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 city that i live should be very beautiful boulder is in fact very very beautiful yeah and uh, it is actually like the the, the stress of the masters uh, when we just take a walk or take a cycle here and look at the mountains here i it, all my worries just fade away so and the campus is also as you said in ssu small uh, cu boulder campus is so big mm-hmm. like uh, it's like uh, even if all the students are in the campus it is even bigger than the <laughs> students say it, it is so big so thinking of that i i don't have any regrets and and the the student uh, my my very close friend who did my who did who was my close friend in undergrad as well he is also he also came with masters for me to see boulder so we are <laughs> roommates now so i didn't have I, to to be very honest i don't have any regrets well that's a good situation to be in because you know yeah. that means your choice was pretty perfect Yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it turned out to be good uh, right uh, now take us through the uh, decision process that you went through because i know you must have applied to few universities you must have yeah. got few admits then you made a choice so how was that process like because that is the same situation a lot of people will be uh, mm-hmm. now so if this will really help them yeah so i got uh, admits from uh, cu boulder the sunny buffalo and mm-hmm. university of utah and uh, like and university of texas dallas uh, those were uh, the few universities uh, that i got into at uh, the got admits from and uh, c boulder uh, utah c boulder uh, like both of my close best friend and uh, i got so and he didn't get utah and mm-hmm. uh, stuff like that and sunny buffalo we both got and i didn't 
prefer sunny prefer because of the uh, the peer size of the, the uh, there will be a lot of uh, the, the strength of the students coming to sunny university of buffalo would be mm. higher than c boulder so that i thought the, the lesser the the cohort size it will be easier to get uh, more opportunities for on campus jobs and stuff mm-hmm. like that so mm-hmm. that is the reason i didn't uh, opt for university of buffalo and i came for c boulder got it got it now we are at the last question that i have for today uh, mm-hmm. and, and it is that uh, let's say someone has finalized cu boulder they are mm-hmm. coming in fall 22 mm-hmm. what would you be your top three recommendations for them that they should do which will set them up for those two years yeah so first of all regarding the like internships that they should be they should start as early as possible it shouldn't be like uh once they prepare the ds i'll go part once they are comfortable with the part they'll start applying by the time they start applying i think most of the internships will be over so i think they should be aware of the fact that they should from the very word go you should start applying for you should be very very proactive that that is the one that i think that applies for all the universities right you should be aware uh, of the situations around you and you should be more proactive that's the uh, that's one advice that i could think of and i think uh the second important thing is that even though you are doing your efforts right and uh, you might not get the result as you expect uh, the your peer students or your friends would start getting internships or the full time offers or the tas and ra jobs uh, sooner than you get uh, it will be easily devastating easily to get depressed i would just suggest them to trust their process and uh, trust what they can control and trust their controllables and just worry about their controllables i think rest of the results will follow automatically uh, that's the advice i could think of because it's no use worrying about what other students get because it's we can't control them what we can right. control is our process so we sh- we should just worry about our process and i think the result will follow automatically right right that was that's a good one i think that reminds me of ms dhoni you know he always <laughs> that is he he also always says that okay you need to trust the process um, well thank you so much for patiently answering all these questions um, yeah that's been my pleasure nitty um rahul um and guys uh, whichever is your favorite tip definitely share it in the comment section below and definitely subscribe to our channel uh, but with that we are done with this interview and i'll see you in the next interview